Mm-hmm. My sh- calves are too fat, dude. This one, this one, this one. All right, everybody, welcome to Coffee for Closers. Alex Wellings here. Uh, today on Coffee for Closers, we're talking all about workshops. Uh, are they back? Of course, they're back. Uh, but what are we seeing as far as success in workshops? Maybe some maybe advice to folks that are starting to structure the rest of the year, what they should do, what they should try to avoid, and, of course, uh, what they should do about uh, all of the great success in marketing that's going on with workshops right now and the big demand. So all that and more on today's episode of Coffee Closers. Hope you enjoy. All right, everybody. Welcome to Coffee for Closers. Alex here. Rick here in the new set. Very cool. Uh, I mean, I like it. You like yeah, it? Yeah, I like it. Moving all around. Moving all around. We're just testing everything out. Again, uh, if you're new to the show, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, anything of the sort. Uh, it all helps, and we're you know excited to have you here watching. So, why not become a subscriber? Yeah, <laughs> grow the yeah. brand, right? Grow the grow brand. brand. Now nah, we're talking about uh, workshops today. Uh, the 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 maybe infamous workshop at this point mm-hmm. feels infamous. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this not too long ago, but we are coming towards the end of summer. And we thought it would be a good idea for us to chat a little bit with everybody about just maybe our thoughts on the workshop world. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about webinars recently in an episode of Coffee for Closers. They got some mixed reviews on that. There's certainly a lot of believers in webinars and so on and so forth. But this is just in general uh, workshops, getting back to it, live in-person workshops, right? Um, and, you know, everybody's kind of maybe taking their first summer hiatus yeah in however many summers two years ish yeah. <laughs> two, two years yeah. at least the grand majority i mean i'm sure some people took summer breaks before that but mm-hmm. people are coming back now time for that final last hunt until before the end of the year a lot of people closing up opportunities that they had prior to the end of summer or that were just kind of lingering throughout summer kids are back in school now People are starting to think more about uh, making moves financially. The market's kind of in a weird place as far as it's going down. Will it go down farther? I don't know. But people are starting to make moves. Uh, And at the very least, there's a ton of folks that have questions about, you know, what they should be doing Mm -hmm. with their money. And we are seeing an extraordinary uptick. I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen an uptick as big as we're having right now in the learning lab, which is our workshop program Mm -hmm. that we use. And, you know, just in general, workshops seem to be trending in a direction that can only be explained by the market's demand and need to understand the current financial climate that exists, inflation, stagflation, you know, interest rates going up, the Fed, all Mm -hmm. these things. These are a ton of questions. In fact, probably a good seminar idea to really just cover all those topics yeah. trade market point, don't, yeah. don't you know nah, i'm sure yeah somebody's got that. it's a big point it's like election year right it's like everybody forgets to pay attention to politics until that fourth year rolls around and then it's on kind of everybody's mind like this is the point where uh, like yeah. the water breaks and it's it's all news is talking about you know it's it's what it's a lot of people in mind especially as we're coming to like the end of the year too yeah um i think it definitely attributes to a lot of the maybe attention focus that's been played on it sure And so it bodes the question, you know, a lot of folks out there scale back their workshop operations uh, in COVID, of -hmm. course. And then when they came back to doing workshops, they had found other ways to market and they've just been slower, Mm -hmm. right? Like they've added, maybe they used to do 24 workshops a year and now they've scaled back or they scaled back to almost zero in COVID and then they came back and now they do 12 workshops a year. Yeah. And they do some other stuff that they just learn to diversify their marketing. Well, you know, look, yes, do we have a fantastic workshop program? Yes, would I love everybody to jump in? No, yes, but am I saying by all means everybody just needs to only be doing workshops? No, I do think that people learned a good lesson as far as marketing is concerned and the need for diversity, right, In, in how you approach your marketing effort. But I do think that there's something to be said also 
about leaning into an opportunity, Mm -hmm. right? And this is an opportunity. People would love the opportunity to sit down with somebody in their local community and actually legitimately talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, as much as we advocate for a virtual style of process, right? And like how efficient you can do marketing by doing it through a virtual process, whether it's appointment, referrals, whatever it may be. Um, and all things, there's always a counterbalance to it, right? It's like, as the industry continues to move towards a virtual process, right? That leaves an abscess of, or an absence yeah. for people that want to sit down in a personal format, in an individual format, right? Yeah. So it's like, continue to fill both sides of it. It's like the idea of retro uh, fashion, right? Mm-hmm. Like by the time too many people come into a new trend, the old things start to creep back in as yep. a cool thing yep. because that's nobody's doing what anymore. nobody's doing, right? Absolutely. And it's just everybody wants to stand out. Now, am I saying that there's nobody doing workshops right now? No, no, of there's not, tons. Right? But the fact is there's so much need for financial information. And I think there's a... I, I mean, a large prevalence on the internet of financial education, mm-hmm. whether it be from professional sources like, or like mass media sources like CNBC or the MSNBCs or Fox mm-hmm. Business or whatever it might be. There's plenty of information out there um, that, you know, people, I mean, seem to be kind of high level and never get down to the meat and potatoes and are certainly never really too targeted towards retirement planning in mm-hmm. general. I think there's there's two groups of thought, right? Like, oh, I can have appointments with people, direct to appointments or leads, right? You can call mm-hmm. them whatever you want to call them. And those are people, I mean, the trend now is to book appointments on somebody's calendar, right? Mm-hmm. But that leaves a whole subset of people out there. This is the reason why I would never leave workshops and say, altogether, I don't want to do workshops anymore. Yeah. Unless you're working in a niche like federal employees and that niche of appointments is so, so... Broad or maybe not broad. What am I looking for? Like just a ton of people there. Like there's just so much opportunity there okay, that yeah. that that I don't need. It's a large to. enough well you can continue to fish from. Even exactly niche, right. You know? Thank yeah. you. So there's something like that. But if I'm in a place where it's like I've got this niche market or I've got some opportunities and I'm gonna work a a, a lead source to some degree, I wouldn't bail on the opportunity, especially in my local community, to sit down and harvest folks on in the workshop world because generally I feel like the people that attend workshops are the ones that have a small question about retirement or social security or estate planning or the current status of the, of the market Mm -hmm. and want to know how it's going to affect their retirement, but also don't want to feel like they're monopolizing somebody's hour on their calendar for little old me, you know? Yep, that's a good point. Yeah, I think, like I was saying, I guess before, right, you're seeing a lot of the industry try to reach out to, like, a direct-to-consumer base, right, or, like, go to direct appointment, right? It's like, if you know what you're looking for and you know what you want, schedule an appointment here, talk to the person, and get it done, Yeah, right? And I think 100% the the seminar world is still like, yeah, like, from the client's perspective, I've got most of this figured out. I kind of know what I'm thinking, but there's this piece I don't know, right, whether it's Social Security, Medicare, whatever it may be, right? Like I, I generally know what I'm looking for, but I don't know the answer to it. And I'm hoping this guy can help me out. And at least I'm not doing it like you're saying in a very, I'm scheduling an appointment because I don't know that far yet. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. direct to consumer is like, look, I know what I'm looking for. I just want this and I'm going to do enough Googling to find it. And then once I find my answer, yeah, I need somebody to talk to, to help me out with it and get that done versus yeah. a seminar is like, look, I get social security. Um, but there's this thing I keep reading, like the provisional income formula, right? Like I can't figure out how that works. And obviously it's important. Or when do I really file? Like I know all of it except for this. I'm going to go listen to this guy and see if he knows the answer to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's a huge part of the market, right? Um, but, I think too, to add to that, a large, I think, thing we're seeing now is for the past 10 years, um, it's been pretty easy to be a investor, um, to yeah. put money into the market and to do all right. Yeah. And I think you had a lot of people over the past 10 years that have got real confident, been real confident in their individual abilities to be an investment planner or financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And now that we're no longer in that environment are starting to look at it and say, Hey, maybe I should talk to somebody who's supposed to be a professional. in this. I don't understand why this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. 
everything's going down. Do I pull it out? What do I do? Right. Yeah. Do I leave it in? You know, like I'm doing the research on it because again, there is no conclusive thought on that. Right. Like that's a very it's specific. Like, oh, I personal. was always supposed to ride the ups and downs, but this is such a strange situation and yeah. I don't understand. Should I get out? Why are the bonds doing bad and the stocks are doing bad? They're yeah. supposed to be counter cyclical. Right. Why is the federal reserve doing that? Why, you know, it's like, why would they lower yes. interest rates? Oh, I understand yeah. inflation, but this doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, no, yeah. I agree with that. And that goes to a workshop. That person but the doesn't problem, go to. The problem with that is it makes, you know, the marketer's job really, really easy to show fantastic results. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where you got to be worried as an advisor is when you're spending dollars now. It's like it used to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to spend X amount of money and I'm going to get X amount of people. Yep. Right. Yep. But now the marketer is able to have you spend that same X and generate 2x mm -hmm. the 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 attendance. Yep. And that's because demand is rising. This is two marketers mm -hmm. warning all of you watchers that it's really easy right now for us to captivate an audience because so many people are worried about finance. Yeah. They're able to cattle call anybody they possibly want. Mm -hmm. I said like when we just when, like our learning lab program for instance, we started getting all these reports of like yeah, hundreds and hundreds of registrations per, of each of these events. Yeah. And we're like, gosh, these guys are only spending two grand. Like, so you're telling me, because the way our learning, for anybody watching that doesn't yeah. necessarily know our, our learning lab workshop, you spend two grand, we apply that two grand budget to a Facebook campaign, and it's to a targeted audience, retirees of a certain, you know, filtering mechanism, you know, and we, if, if you want, we can go through the details another time. You can call into Megastar and, and talk. But essentially, you'd pay two grand. That campaign runs for two weeks. That campaign will generate an audience. Mm -hmm. And it would be somewhere around 60, 70 people, and half would fall off, which is kind of the, the shtick with social media marketing. There's a lot of those don't stick. Mm -hmm. And you'd still end up with 35, 40 attendees at the workshop for two grand. Yeah. And the quality was, you know, very good. And then we started seeing something over the last three months or last two months really market over the summer was really wonky up and mm -hmm. down and now even more so it's starting to really really trend down yeah. a lot of people are worried mm -hmm. you know the fed's making all kinds of crazy comments about x y or z and all of a sudden the registrations just shot through the roof yeah. nothing had changed on our part we didn't just start targeting new audiences or anything mm -hmm. like that and so it's really, really easy for a marketer to fall in this trap of like, man, we just got yeah, so good got at numbers. this and we got mm -hmm. the number and I'm just going to throw out those numbers at you, the advisor watching. Yep. And, you know, hey, look, now we're able to get twice as many people or three X the amount of people at your workshop. And that looks good aesthetically, mm -hmm. but you're not filtering. You've got a ton of people that are coming to these that are. You know, maybe not the people that... No, I can tell you, like, the person that cares about a 10% loss is the person with $50,000 in their account, not $5 million, right? I think I think the $5 million guy still, still worries cares. about that. Agreed. But again, he's got somebody to talk to a lot of times, right? Yeah, I, I would still say somebody that has less money, taking a loss with that money is... Maybe in general. But, I mean, there's just more people of that size there. Fair argument, too, yeah. You know... I, I, but again, what we saw, the numbers were numbers. We didn't mm. change anything from a, a good quality filtering mechanism that we had in place for, for the longest time, at mm -hmm. least all year. It started generating an audience of a lesser quality. Yep. And, and we don't know until our advisors start coming back to us and start saying, hey, man, room was full last night to the gills, man, love it. And then yep. a week later, they're coming back and they're like, yeah. hey, man. I just not a lot of people with money. Yep. And you're like, okay, I need Weird. names. I, I need to yeah. know who's what. And we start looking at this and we're like, man, we got to tighten this up. Yep. I don't know how this is happening, but people are sharing it outside the demographic because mm -hmm. there's loose control. Mm -hmm. At least with mail, you have some control, but the expense is just outrageous. Mm -hmm. And so it's like digital is by far and away the most cost effective way to market your workshop, but it needs to generate quality or it's a waste of time. Absolutely. Right? Yep. And so Learning Lab then instituted, we, we came back, we asked our, we tasked our creative team to kind of figure this out. The creative team comes back and says, hey, we have a way 
to segment the lists based on qualities that a mail house would have used, mm-hmm. right? So mail houses for the longest time have used asset banding and ways to really target the wealthiest to the wealthy out there, right? Yep. And it made mail very, very targeted to an audience of people that were genuinely interested in retirement planning and had the assets. Yeah. So now we're Whether able they to... filled it out or not and sent it back, you at least knew it was going to the right person. So we found opportunities, exactly, to tag the exact same people and the exact same data sources that... that, that, that to combine the mailhouse data source, basically, mm-hmm. with Facebook's data and generate an audience. That is exactly what we were looking for. And it narrowed the audience down substantially, but it increased the quality substantially. And the cost of the workshop didn't go up. The attendance went back down, right? Or the, the, yeah, the attendance, but also the registrations went back down. And now we're at this audience size, but it also changed the demographic even for better. So what was a very good audience or a good audience? good opportunity, great return on investment is now probably the best quality workshop audience I've done since I walked in and saw like David Connor doing workshops back in, I don't know, 2000, I don't know, 12, 2010, mm-hmm. back when social security workshops were the cat's meow. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it was insane. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised to see this. And the thing is, it's like, oh, guys doing mailers are like, yeah, you know, we, we, we've got good success, but it's been dwindling. Mm-hmm. It's because they've been seeing the same mail over and over. Yeah. But now these people are, are on digital platforms. I and mean, we just spent 30 minutes before this episode talking about how digital has just wrapped us up, even though we know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. We're trying to fight it. But digital has wrapped us and sucked us in. Yeah. But now, I mean, I'm just so astonished by what the creative team's doing to generate an audience this of this caliber for $2,000. Yeah. And, and basically, you know, the return is just insane. Yeah. It's and, been awesome to watch. It's I, been awesome to, to see the shift of it. It's, yeah. But again, too, it's like this is only a concern with a group that or marketers that are driven by your bottom line, mm-hmm. right? Like too many marketing firms are mail houses or third-party organizations that don't get, aren't tied to any producer's success. Yeah. They just cut a check and that's it. And then we're going to put an audience or mail her out and that's it. But when it's a group like ours, we're looking at numbers and like, man, why are these numbers going up so high? It's really easy for us to get high and mighty and think we're the best. But, but we don't care about that at all. All mm-hmm. we care about is that production comes in at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what we're built off of. So, so we are not scared to cut fat out of a, a workshop. That would mm-hmm. essentially fool somebody into thinking, ah, it's a numbers game and I get the numbers here, so eventually mm-hmm. the quality's got to be there. No, yeah. it doesn't. I'm telling you, it does not need to be there. It does not need to be there at all. And it isn't guaranteed. Just it's not guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. Because if somebody's demographics are set too loose, especially in social mm-hmm. world, but also in the male world, mm-hmm. or the copy isn't original enough, mm-hmm. it's a waste of time, energy, and effort. Mm-hmm. And you will see a return, a, a diminishing return on that investment. Yep, absolutely. People that were once spending, you know, five thousand in our workshops are paying ten thousand for the same kind of response rate yeah. because they doubled the the mail. Not that the cost of mail necessarily went up by much, although I'm sure it has a little bit since inflation. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, huge, it's a huge waste of time too, right? It's like you know, best case scenario, what you get a hundred people in the room. Yeah, you, you buy an auditorium for the night, you get 100 people in the room, and now you get to sit on, what, 80 appointments? Yeah, what a colossal waste of money. Time, right? That's been the biggest waste, yeah. right? We sit screw there. Screw the two grand, screw the three grand, right? So, no, it's been, I guess, really cool to see a, a better response out of it because you have to kind of balance it, right? You know, I would have said it like a year ago, it wasn't so needed because there wasn't as much of a drive, a hard, firm drive to be like, hey, I need to sit down with an advisor right now, right? So, like, we could control... And the quality was already there, but it's it's been good to see it start to flip back and yeah. have people a lot happier with the production coming in. I'd say the number one thing is like what we talk about people, the, the whole idea of the this demand in the market, because again, you guys are coming back from summer. The demand is here. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing workshops, it's time to taste them again. If you are doing workshops, you need to taste you need to be wary of what's out there right now yep. and taste, potentially taste something else. It doesn't necessarily need to be megastars. 
program, but but just something that's a little bit different potentially because, again, there's a lot of bad information out there. There's a lot of wasteful ways to spend money. Mm -hmm. The old ways of mailers and such potentially have some merit. But again, that's what everybody's doing. And you know, look, I've been thoroughly impressed, and I know you have, and I know our advisors are kind of, they either have tra tasted it just recently of this new caliber of product that's out in the, in, 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 of workshop caliber mm -hmm. product that's out there, or they're about to and they're excited about it. Yeah. And so, you know, I urge anybody watching, you know, Go ahead, try it. And, and to be honest, if you're wanting to love, I don't love to use coffee for closers as an opportunity to pitch the learning lab per se. Yeah. But if if anybody would like to learn more about it, we are going to do a workshop next. What was it, Dylan? Wednesday, we're going to do a workshop. Wednesday next week, we're going to do a workshop. But the dates and times will come out over the next week or so. So keep an eye on your inbox. But regardless of our program or not, like it's a great time to be getting back into gotta doing get workshops. back to doing workshops. You know, it's a feeding frenzy right now. A lot of people need help. A lot of people are looking for information. Um, I think there's one of like the highest, I guess, uh, yeah. I don't remember what reporting company, Winks maybe. I think Winks said it was one of the highest, like, yeah. fixed deferred annuity sales quarters, like, ever recorded. So, oh, for sure. Um, and plus, the products are great. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that a ton on the show, too. Yeah. But it's just time. And it's like, we love appointments, direct to appointment work, uh, work or uh, appointment type programs. Mm -hmm. But again, there's a lot of merit to the workshop, yeah. too. And so, that, I guess, is our main urge to anybody watching is you know, give it a shot give it a shot you got two more good months to really get some business okay. in the door for the rest of the year two good workshop months mm -hmm. and the rest of the year to do appointments yep. you know that that's mm -hmm. that's really the thought so anyway hope everybody enjoyed golf for closures today uh thanks rick and uh anybody out there if you enjoy the show don't forget to subscribe give us a like those always help and uh, drop any comments on any of the things we talked about today. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care.